What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast. Got a special guest today, Todd Bosler. I had to work on that last name a couple times to make sure I got that one right, but uh, got connected with him uh, actually uh, on social media, and uh, he ended up reaching out and saying, hey, man, I'd love to be on the podcast, and I figured yeah. he'd be a great guest, so welcome, man. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Absolutely. So tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah, you bet. Well, um, my wife and I and our three kids live here in Wildwood, Missouri. I'm a financial coach and a financial advisor with a firm called Primerica Financial. Um, a lot of people haven't heard of Primerica because we don't nationally advertise, but we're actually the largest financial services organization in all of North America. Uh, we got about 5,000 offices nationwide. Uh, my agency is in multiple states nationwide of people that I've developed and trained. And i uh, been with the company for 29 years. It's all I know. I absolutely love what I do and coaching people about money. Um, it's paid its dividends for my wife and I and our family. It's been a blessing, if you will. And I was a young gun, just like yourself, 21 years old when I started. That's amazing, man. And uh, so, so you said you got started at 21 years old. Bring us back to that point. Yeah. What, what made you even want to get into that industry? Well, it's a, it's interesting because I it was it was just by happen chance that actually I got started. So, um, you know, like a lot of college kids, and again, this was many years ago. Um, I was just kind of floating through school. I did okay in school. Uh, but I had no direction. I had no idea what the heck I was going to do. At the time when I got introduced to Primerica, I was serving tables at a Mexican restaurant. So I got food service, right? And I was working what was then called Famous Bar, now Macy's, in the menswear department. So I was thinking, well, maybe I'll go into retail or in restaurant after I graduate because I got a basic business degree. Uh, but luckily, a fraternity brother of mine uh, told me about a gentleman in Kansas City that was working with our company. And at the time, um, his name is Shane. At the time, Shane, when I met him, he was 29 years old. He made $750,000. And this was 30 years ago. Which a year. Is a, a year okay. in income. Okay, he was 29 years old. And, uh, he be and I was like, I don't know anybody that makes that type of income, right? And part of me was kind of like, are, is what this company doing right for people if somebody's making that type of money? Because I didn't grow up with money. I don't know how you grew up, but I, Not did. at all. I didn't grow up with money. I never learned about money from my parents or any of that type of stuff. So I kind of looked at it as an opportunity to learn about money. So if I ever had, quote, a good job, I would know how to handle my money. So I got started part-time when I was in college. And... Um, and uh, actually was in the business for six months. And I'm kind of a pioneer type guy where I planted my flag in Springfield, Missouri, where I was at school. And I opened up an office when I was 22 years old, six months after I started, and um, right across from Bass Pro Shops, if people know where that's at down in Springfield, Missouri. But I opened up an office down there. I had no clue what I was doing. Like my dad would say, I was still wet behind the ears. But I went and did it anyway. And I built a great business down there for about two years, moved up to St. Louis, started expanding my business elsewhere. And, um, you know, like I was sharing with you a little bit today on a conversation, you know, going into my fifth year in the business, I was making six figures in Primerica, which if you would ask me when I started, I was just hoping to learn about finances, right? I never thought about making that type of money as a, you know, as a 26 year old at the time, um, which was a lot of money back then. And it's still okay money today, but, um, you know, we grew our business from there. And six figures you know, at that time was you were you were saying that like certain uh, certain industries out there, they were making 30 grand a year, 40 yeah. grand a year out of college. So the difference of how much money you were actually making right. is a lot more than, you know, what 100,000 is. Yeah. Today. And equivalent today and, you know, just looking at inflation, it is about a quarter of a million dollars 30 years ago compared to today. So, you know, make money, save money. It was life changing, you know, and, you know, like anybody that branches out to start their own business like your, yourself, I know a lot about your story, but um, you know, there's always going to be naysayers. There's going to be people think you're doing something crazy. I lived in a fraternity house with 74 other guys. And, um, you know, our business allows you to build an agency just like, you know, a real estate, you know, company, just like a, a doctor does and builds a, a practice or an attorney builds a firm. They recruit and train other, you know, attorneys. Our business allows you to recruit and train other agents and other advisors in your business. Well, a lot of people didn't understand that concept because everybody's so focused, a lot of my fraternity brothers, on going to get a good job, right? And I was always kind of like, well, I always wanted to do something different. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to control my income. That scares a lot of people, I think, that, you know, are living a life right now of not, um, you know, um, of not merit. Like, they're not happy what they do, but they just do it, right? They just get in their little comfort zone. They just keep doing it and showing up, where I think some people have big passions and dreams and goals, but the income that they're making is never going to accomplish that. So people don't go outside their comfort zone and go do what they really are passionate about. Luckily for me, I had great mentors. Like I said, my friend Shane and others. And I was like, man, if I can even do 
a quarter of what that guy is making, right? You know, because he, he was the first guy in our company to make a million dollars before he was 30 years old. And again, this was many moons ago. But um, yeah, just follow mentors. And I think people can do that. They follow the right people. So the Shane guy, you know where where he's at right now. You guys, oh still yeah, stay we're connected. We're, we've been connected for thirty years, right? Did he end up going much further than that specific spot? Oh yeah, I mean he's grown his income tremendously, and our business. And he's got a great business in Primerica, and actually he's got one of the the biggest organizations within our firm. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean we we talk uh, all the time. I mean we've been buddies for a long time. So and I dedicate a lot of our success. At the end of the day, I think. Most people, you know, accept their own successes and failures because at the end of the day, it's up to us, right? If it is to be, it's up to me. But having mentorship and and putting your eagle to the side, I think we talked about this earlier. I I have no problem. I, I love getting mentored by people like yourself and other people that have what I want. But you got sometimes got to put your eagle to the side to get what you want. And that means go get mentored by other people and learn from some of the best. And I, I've just been fortunate enough to surround myself with some great people over the years. That's amazing, man. So so you were making all this money, right, at, at that time. And you were, as a, as a young kid, what were all your, your friends saying? Were they like, hey, man, get me in on this. Let me, well, let me come join here, you. One of the, one of the, so early on, they didn't support me. So when I was in the fraternity house, you know, I was driving. Th here's something I did early on. I, I drove three hours from Springfield, Missouri to Overland Park, Kansas. I did that for seven straight months every Saturday morning for a three-hour meeting, and then I'd come back to Springfield. Most people would never do that, but I did that because I wanted to be where Shane was, right? I wanted to get to where I wanted to go and be around great people. Uh, but when I did that and I started t talking to my friends about little successes and the people that I was following, well, you can imagine if you were 22 years old and like, telling somebody you're following a guy that's making 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars a month, they would think you're like crazy, like he's doing something illegal. So they gave me a lot of hard time, right? Matter of fact, it got to the point where I kind of had to remove myself from the fraternity house that I was paying monthly just because I couldn't be around negative people because those friends of mine, you know, did not have what I wanted and I knew I was following the right people. That's another thing, kind of a learning lesson. A lot of people hang around the wrong people. You know, if you take the average uh, incomes of your five closest cronies or your friends, you're probably making the same money as your other five best friends. So if you want to basically raise your lid and raise your income, you and I both know this, you got to go start surrounding yourself with other people. So I removed myself from that environment and uh, got after it because I knew where I was headed and it didn't matter. So yeah, one of the most powerful phrases I heard early on because I do even people, I, when I coach people today in my own business, there's gonna be certain people that are not gonna support you. You would think your family, your friends would be the most supportive circles that you have, but they're not, right? Some might be, but in behind closed doors, they may still talk about you, right? That happened to me all the time early on. Even some of my own immediate family members did, right? You know, they were always giving lip service or sharing things to other people about what I was doing because it was not the norm. It wasn't the day nine to five grind. I never wanted them. I, and I, you know what's crazy is I was telling them, a friend of mine this recently is I, I realized I've never had a boss. I've never had a boss in my life besides those two jobs I had in college and other jobs I had when I was a teenager, right? But I've never had a boss. I've always been my own boss. I control my own time. I control my own income. And I think uh, if people knew that was available to them, they would want that. So when you, you know, this might be a dumb question too. <laughs> when you own kind of like a uh, an agency like this, mm -hmm. would you call that a, is it an entrepreneur or? Yeah. It, yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's, you know, er, people in our business, it's not a franchise top opportunity where you're paying big money for a franchise. People actually that I bring aboard to my team even still today, uh, we're independent contractors, right? So you have a home base type business that you do qualify for tax deductions that most people get that they don't get at a W-2 job, right? So instantly I've got several people on my team right now that always have been corporate people, but they now have a business, right? And statistically, if you look at just writing things off, you know, your home office, writing your cell phone off, writing mileage off, travel expenses, things that people don't even aware of that they could be doing, it reduces their tax liability on an annual basis. So a lot of people that are on your team, do, mm -hmm. they, do they do this full time or they have another job plus they're doing this on the side? Okay, great question. So one thing that's very unique with Primerica in our industry is we allow people, Kyle, to work with us part time. So they don't have to give up their security of their full time job. So it'd be like somebody, maybe you know somebody that you know has a has a corporate job, but they do real estate on the side. Maybe they're part time, sell five, six homes a year. 
um, you know, our other side business, our side hustle. We all know that word's a big word over the last, you know, it seems five, six years, side hustle. You got to be doing something else with your spare time. Well, that's how Primerica operates. It's been that way for the last 46 years. You know, our founder of our company uh, was actually a coach and a teacher. He recruited seven of his best buddies that were also coaches and teachers and started working part time in the financial arena. And so, yes, I have people that are full time. We have people that are part time. You know, the part time opportunity with home base, work from home. Um, we pay for all your professional licenses, which is about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars worth of licenses. Um, you know, it's it, it's amazing to me that, uh, you know, that we allow people to work part time. But it's just the way the opportunity has always been. And you don't have to go to college, which leads me to the next question, right? right. You do not have to have a college degree <laughs> to do what we do. Should people, do you, do you think that people have to go to college to be successful? Absolutely not. Okay. And why do you say that? Because it, it, it's the, it's the truth. Okay. I mean, you're, you're a prime example of it. I did go to college, but I will tell you this college did not prepare me to have the success that I have had in my career. Right. I knew nothing about sales. I knew nothing about the people business. I knew nothing about people skills. I, I didn't know maybe a little bit about leadership because I always had leadership roles, whether it was in scouts when I was a young kid or even in, in the fraternity and, and on campus. However, those people skills did help here, but all that can be learned. You know, and I'm not against college by any means. Matter of fact, my my oldest daughter plays D2 volleyball in Springfield at Drew University. I have a, my other daughter that's a year younger is at Mizzou right now as a sophomore, and my son's going to go to Mizzou, right? I think it's a great experience. Um, I think when people are know what they want in life, like if you want to be a, a dentist or a doctor or an engineer or an accountant, you know, you're pretty much going to have to go to college, right? But if you're just kind of going to college to go to college, not knowing, listen, anybody can be successful in our business, but it takes some grit and hard work. You know, I always tell people when they come aboard, listen, you know, this might be one of the hardest things that you do, but I promise if you just follow my lead, it will work out for you. The problem is, is a lot of times people, you know, get people in their ears where they start doubting themselves and their belief system that they can do this and be successful at that maybe sometimes doesn't, uh, you know, happen for them. And I'm sure that you're in your head all the time about certain things, like a limiting mindset pops up just like me, right? Yeah. I might have a, a crush it one week and I still have a limiting mindset and going back to surrounding yourself around the right people, right. it's so important to surround yourself around those big time players, those people who are really dominating because they're gonna snap you out of it real quick. Absolutely, it's so important to define your tribe, right? And, um, you know, and just recently, about two years ago, actually, um, you know, I was kind of on my own island. And what I mean by that was, is I was tied into some people, but not the right people. And I realized I need to take a step back for me to kind of go to the next level as far as our business and our income. I need to surround myself with a few folks. So what I did was, is I, I reached out to uh, two lady leaders in our business, Jody and Kara, and another great friend of mine down in Springfield, Casey, and said, hey, why don't we us four get together on a Monday morning and just start having a little bit of accountability and, and just really like kind of find out and try to push each other, right? And we started doing that. And then we, we realized like, man, what we got here is gelling and it's working well. And uh, why don't we uh, like get our teams involved, right? So then we started doing mentorship with our teams on Saturday morning. So now we have this whole hodgepodge of a, a bunch of all around the country, right? You know, with us four, with us four vice presidents, and that has raised all of our incomes, right? So we're all very grateful. So if you're out there in, in, in a business and kind of on your own island, look for mentorship. There's people that want it too. You just got to find the right people. So you said the word uh, vice president. Yes. So you, what is a price a vice president at uh, Primerica? Okay. So a vice president is someone that actually is running a, faci a facility or an office in the town um, that maybe they live in, right? Um, I have my office over in Baldwin. I got a beautiful office there. Um, but I also have developed other people within my agency and my team that have opened up other offices. So you can actually uh, build your business. So my, it, basically I can, ha I can be licensed in all states. I can recruit and train people in all states because our system today, Kyle, is all about um, it's home based. It's all on Zoom the way that we are conducting our business. Um, I should say 90% of it's on Zoom. There's still, I do a lot of face-to-face -face appointments, you know, still as well, but I do most of it on Zoom. So people can really truly have a very professional home-based business that's not a hobby, that's truly a career that they can grow into and transition from part-time to maybe full-time. I've got people, my, I had a part-time associate um, that's in her mid-60s that made $15,000 in the month of July this year, right? You know, I have other people that make $2,000 a month, $3,000 a month. And for somebody, if you think about 
about it that's making maybe 50,000 a year and you can add an extra 1500 or $2,000 a month in a very professional type business like ours of helping and serving other people, learn how to protect their families, invest for their future, get out of debt. Those are the concepts that we teach. I mean, it's very rewarding. Like it's never been work to me on doing what I do. And I think you asked me earlier this morning, we were chatting, like, you know, you still get after it. Like you still, and yes, you know, there's been times where I've just kind of just was rolling where I wasn't even really doing anything and still making this incredible income. But you know, you, when you know you're good at what you do and, and you know, I think I told you like my income kind of got stagnant and part of it was, is I was just not doing the business that I loved and that I fell in love with when I started the business. Right. So I kind of made a decision with my God, my family and my kids that dad's going to go back to work. And that's exactly what I did because I know you're a young, uh, young dad, but as your kids get older, you want to be an example of that hard work pays off. And I really, really believe in that. I've instilled that in my kids. I've, you know, in some capacity, I've kind of brainwashed my kids of, of hard work does pay off and a lot of other things that I, I've taught them over the years. So when you kind of plateaued there, I guess, like, what made you want to really pivot? Like, what got you out of that pivot? Because a lot of people are kind of doing the same yeah. thing every single day, and they they don't know how to make that pivot and just take right. action. That's a great question. Well, um, I'm sure if I were to ask you, are you a competitor, Kyle? Do you like to compete? I was actually going to ask okay. you if you were if you were. Oh, I'm a competitor, right? Yes. Like, I do not like to lose. Matter of fact, one of my license plates a long time ago was uh, uh, I will win. And the other one said uh, will to win because my wife thought that was a little yeah. cocky. So I went to will to win. Now I've got my nickname that I have. Was it on a my fancy car? Uh, yeah, it was a nice car. It was, I, I've been in BMWs over okay. my years and Mercedes. But anyway, it was a nice car. Uh, yeah, that was kind of a little bit arrogant, I guess, but I, I liked it. So I like to compete. So um, whenever people are in lulls in their business, I really feel that you got to kind of peel it back and find out why you're why you're stuck, right? And sometimes it could be that you don't have the mentorship in your life at that point. For me, as I just my as my kids got older, I wanted to be an example that hard work does pay off. I know I just repeated myself, but it's so true though. That was a big part of me. Plus. I have bigger goals and dreams, right? You know, my mentor that I was talking about earlier, Shane, you know, he talks about, you know, because we teach people, part of our mission statement is to teach families and individuals how to become financially independent. Okay, that's part of our motto. Okay, financially independent, properly protected, and debt-free. And those are pretty powerful statements. That's exactly what our mantra is in Primerica. But getting financially independent is one thing. Getting to the next level where you and I need to go is financial impact, okay? It's a whole nother level and I'm a believer. So there's big things that I would like to be able to give and do for other people, organizations, mission trips, churches, whatever it might be. But it takes a heck of a lot more than what I've got right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And I learned that from my own mentor and other mentors in Primerica that, um, again, are just absolutely amazing people. What they do with their financial resources that they have had a lot of success here. So how, how exactly does Pri, Primerica actually work? Okay, so Primerica is, um, we're a financial organization. We're actually publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. So years ago, we were uh, uh, owned by a powerhouse. Most people can uh, know it's called Citigroup, the Red Umbrella Company, right? Well, we spun off from them in uh, April of 2010, and Primerica became its own entity. So what does Primerica do? We teach basically people how money works. That's another campaign we have right now. As a matter of fact, uh, I was on a pad podcast a couple of weeks ago, and, and anybody that's interested, I can, uh, they can reach out to me, but I can send them a How Money Works book. This book is millions and millions of copies have been given away, and millions and millions of families in the United States have become financially independent, debt-free, and properly protected because of that book, right? So how money works. So what does Primerica do? We use a concept and the technology that I'm using, I was sharing with you a little bit earlier that it kind of exploded my business through during COVID. And unfortunately, there was a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners that unfortunately kind of went backwards, right? Well, it exploded my business and as well as almost all of Primerica. But we teach people how money works and the concept and the solutions that we're using and some technology that we're using right now, is something called B Dollar Smart. You probably never heard of it, right? No. It's uh, some financial technology. Imagine this, so I, I sent a simple text to your phone, okay? It's a link, you take a fi take five minutes in le or less to fill out a quick financial survey. It doesn't ask for personal information or anything like that, but you put all your current financial status in there, right? About information about your investments, debt, your age, and all those type of things. And this software calculates all these financial alerts. So you hit submit for my results, all these financial alerts pop up. We, I like to call them like talking points. And then I go through these alerts for that family, identify two or three that are most important to, you know, uh, Kyle and Ashley. And then you decide on 
what those solutions that I propose, maybe in a week or so, I come back and share the ideas with you. So it's like a consultation. It's no different than going to your doctor, something's ailing you, you tell the doctor about it, and he says, hey, this is what I'm going to prescribe for you. That's kind of what we are, is a, more of a financial coach or consultant. Um, I never viewed what I do as like financial services of sales, you know, because the word sales scared to stink out of me when I first started, right? Because I, I was uh, I was kind of uh, intimidated by all that because I didn't have those type of skill sets. But like we were saying earlier, you know, college doesn't prepare you for those type of skill sets, but everything can be learned through books and listening to podcasts and, and following the right mentors too. That's awesome, man. What, what, what do you think makes you have like, be a, be a very good communicator? This seems like this is like your 500th podcast. <laughs> this is my second podcast, right? But, uh, but I will tell you, I've spoken for the thousands of people, you know, on stage and that took some, you know, getting used to over time. But, um, you know, one of the things that I tell my kids all the time, listen, the people you know and the people skills you have is what's going to determine your long-term success, whether it's a corporate job or your own business or you being an entrepreneur, people skills, right? So there's been mentors of mine and books that I've read. Um, Les Giblin's a great one. Don't know if you know Les Giblin, but uh, I've read all of his books. Um, Jeff uh, Fox is another great uh, mentor of mine, Re read all of his books. Uh, you may, I don't know if you know John Maxwell. Have you heard of John Absolutely. Maxwell? I uh, had the opportunity years ago. I, I actually golfed with John Maxwell, right? It was amazing. My mentor, Shane, ran a contest because he knew John Maxwell pretty well. And I won a golf outing with John Maxwell. It was pretty cool, right? So I've read every one of John Maxwell's books on le leadership and, and development. Um, what, and did so, you, what did you learn at that, that golf event there? Um, I learned right when we teed off that Michael Jordan was ahead of us in a foursome. That was pretty cool. No, but, uh, but that's true story. But, uh, what, just, just, you know, I, I had it all back then it was VHS tapes, right? So I listened to all the John Maxwell. So I've been to a lot of his events, live events and such. Um, but just, I think, you know, when I came back from that event, just like anything, it adds credibility and validity of who you are. Um, when you can share with other people like I am today that I hung out with John Maxwell, right? Or I've read all of his books. I mean, if you go into my library at my house, I've got all of his books stacked up, right? And what did I learn? I would say, you know, one thing I learned from Maxwell is um, a few things. There's a lot of things I've takeaways, but one is you attract who you are, not what you want. All right. So if you want to attract better people into your business, you've got to become a better person, right? Um, you know, it's kind of like the, I kind of refer to as the gap where if, if you're a four and you're trying to attract a seven or eight into your business, you're never going to get that seven or eight until you raise your lid to the seven, then you can start attracting those people. I'm noticing that in my business right now, just because somebody, you know, has a corporate job that's making a hundred grand quarter of a million dollars a year, doesn't mean they're happy. I mean, I've got people in my business right now. Matter of fact, the last four people I've recruited in my team, late 50s, early 60s, all make six figures and above, some even double that, that are still miserable at their job, right? And I'm attracting them to have an encore career where they can transition from their current job when they retire to have a full-time career in, in financial services. Pretty unique. So, but that's one with John Maxwell. The other one, you know, he's got a failing forward book, which is one of my favorites, but he talks about when you fail and when you're down, pick something up figure out just because you're hurting right now and you're thinking that you're at your wits end and life can't go any worse pick something up learn from that lesson learn why you're down and then obviously get your bootstraps and, and get back up and get on it so i'm gonna have to read some of those books oh uh, i can give uh, be happy to send them over to you but yeah john maxwell one of my favorites on leadership and building for certain so you mentioned that covid actually you know made your business scale you know What's crazy is it did with mine as well, yeah. because with Junker Mobile, you know, all these people used to work at offices every single day, all day long. Right. And then all of a sudden now they're working at home to where it made it so much more convenient for us to go, oh, you can come whenever you want. Oh, wow. So I don't think I would be where I'm at today without COVID actually happening, yeah. which is yeah. crazy, as, as unfortunate That's awesome. as it is. So how did you scale your business during that yeah. time? Yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's an interesting story. So I've always done prior to COVID mostly like what I would call like a kitchen table uh, visit. So you know if I had a referral, you know Bob and Mary, Bob and Mary would let me come over to visit at their kitchen table, kind of on their turf. Now I have a beautiful office where sometimes I have clients come down. So I was always doing like face to face. I always like having that personal interaction, you know, with folks. And plus, you know, a lot of their financial information, all the data, all that, I can scoop it all up and learn from them on that visit. And I'll never forget, we were in uh, on spring break with my family down in Florida, 
And, you know, I got people calling me, you know, like, cause COVID started hitting, right. Call me from back home here in St. Louis. Like, yeah, you got to get back home. Like there's no more bread and toilet paper. And I can't believe you're in Florida. And I was like, why would I want to come back to that when Florida was wide open? Right. And so we stayed like a little like five or six extra days while we were down there. But I will tell you, it was a little pressing for me. Cause I'm thinking if the whole world's shutting down and I can't go visit people across the kitchen table, I'll be quite frank. I, w- I had goosebumps thinking like, what the heck am I going to do? Like, am I going to be like out of not doing visits over the next 12 months or two years, whatever it might be. But then that's where technology came in, where our company had been working on Kyle um, prior to COVID ever starting a home base online financial services career opportunity already. So they accelerated that because keep in mind, we're regulated by every department of insurance in every state, FINRA, SEC, list goes on and on. So we had to comply with all of those type of rules, but the company had already worked a lot of that out. So when COVID hit, they were going to launch this home base online opportunity a year later in 2021, but they accelerated it and launched it in spring of 2022. And it changed my life because my productivity just went to the next level because I wasn't driving around all God's earth and I could do literally in my home office, my office, a Zoom call, and I'm doing three or four appointments in the same time I was maybe doing two before. So Lily, our business doubled, our income doubled, all because of COVID. And uh, we've been still riding that wave since then. That's awesome. So do you, like how many appointments, I guess, would like a, a you know, an average agent roughly book, you know, in a month and right. how are they actually going to generate those leads? Okay, great. So, um, well, when somebody works with us part-time, we usually mention to them that, you know, working six to 10 hours a week, which is really a part, 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 sometime type of business, right. Um, is what we kind of have as an expectation. If people want to, you know, kind of look at transitioning from part-time to full-time quicker then they need to spend more time into it. Um, But, you know, that could amount to maybe, you know, five to six appointments scheduled on a weekly basis. And sometimes people's schedules, you know, they have to reschedule an appointment. So maybe they're doing three or four total appointments a week. But somebody does that in our business, in this line of work with the compensation structure that we have, they're probably making three to four thousand dollars a month part time. Does everybody do that? Absolutely not. Okay. Do a lot of people? Yes. But again, it involves work, right? Now, as far as like when new people uh, come aboard to our team, you know, it's just like anything when you're starting a business or you become a realtor, even like when you started Junk Academy, you got to get your name out there. You got to let a bunch of people know what the heck it is that you're doing as a new career, right? So sometimes the warm market, right? You know, um, whether it's coworkers, a a neighbor, friend, church member, um, you know, you're going to tell other people. So that's kind of how we field train people. So when people come aboard to our team, you're not just coming in go get licensed and kick you out on your own. You're working with a mentor like myself, side by side, like the people I'm working with now, where I'm teaching you how to build the business, right? And the book of business. Um, So Warren Market, the other thing is through social media, you know, posting things on Facebook on whether it's the opportunity to come join us in business or the opportunity of what we do, how we help people. Um, The other thing that I have a little niche that I work well with myself personally right now, it may interest some of your viewers, but when people have a business, right, they're an entrepreneur, they're a solopreneur where like everything's dependent on them, right? Or maybe a, a business owner that has, you know, five employees, 10, 15 employees, um, You know, a niche is a lot of those business owners don't realize they should be taking advantage of the tax code system, but they don't know how. Now, they understand write-offs and deductions and such, but a lot of people don't know that you could be investing for your future, such as accounts like 401ks, solo 401ks, simple IRAs, SEP IRAs. These are all investment instruments that you can put money into that's 100% tax deductible to the business. So a quick story, when we were building our dream home like seven years ago, the, the carpenter that was building our house, I was always there often because of my time. I could just be there when I wanted to. And I finally kind of asked, like, what the heck do you do for a living? I go, well, I teach people about money and I recruit and train people for my business, right? In the financial arena. He's like, I need some help on that, right? And we started talking, it was right around tax time. And he said, you know, I got a question for you, Todd. He goes, my CPA right now is telling me I need to go buy a new box truck or a box trailer, okay? You know, to store his stuff in. He says, but I really don't need one. But he says, if I go buy like a $20,000 trailer, I can take that and has that as a deduction. So I pay less taxes. I go, that's the same CPA that doesn't know nothing about investments because you could take that same $20,000 invested in, let's say, a 401k, solo 401k, or an investment, like in mutual funds, and you can deduct the 20,000, but you have that as an asset for your future that's gonna grow. 
And he had no clue about that. So there's a lot of business owners that understand how they can be taken advantage of things like that in their business. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, a lot of business owners, they end up hiring CPAs or accountants assuming that they know everything, right? right? Yeah. Which which what I kind of notice is like you need to have more of a strategist. You could have your CPA or your accountant. Right. You also need somebody who actually has strategy who can help you. Because for me, I knew nothing. Right. I knew right. nothing whatsoever. And I was used to getting money back every single yeah. year working W-2 jobs at car yeah. washes and this and that. And then my first year of entrepreneurship, I got a bill, you know, my accountant said, hey, it's not looking too good. <laughs> right. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna owe $1,000. <laughs> right. She said, oh, you owe $43,000. And I didn't even have, I barely had that in my bank account, you right. know, because I was investing into this and this yeah. and this. So I wasn't prepared whatsoever. I, I guess, what are some strategies that would you, you would have had me do before that to, to make right. sure that maybe I could have, uh, you know, yeah. had some other better ways. Well, with that, you know, the, the money that you were probably making at the time and even making today, um, if you don't have employees, as I know a lot of times business owners will subcontract, have 1099s, right? And they're not necessarily W-2, but if they are W-2, you can set up a 401k. A lot of people don't realize how, you know, important that is. First off, to retain good employees in your business, uh, when, if you have a, a junk removal company that has benefits, a 401k and maybe even health insurance, okay, uh, and you have another junk removal company that doesn't, if I was a, the employee, I'm going over here with the one with the benefits all day long, agreed? So business owners today are looking for ways to grasp good quality people and to retain them, and part of that is giving benefits. Now here's something too that's starting in January. So a 401k would have been a great solution that you could have put a funnel money, do a small match to you know keep people around, and that does help, no doubt about it, right? There's other some there's other investment instruments that you can do if somebody's just a a sole person where they have no W two, they're they're solely themselves, like a real estate agent. I got many realtors that have what's called a SEP IRA. It stands for Simplified Employee Pension Plan. Or maybe they have a solo 401k. And every one of them has their positives and pros and cons. And so when I sit down with a business owner, it really kind of depends. A lot of times I have conversations with the tax advisor because I got to educate the tax advisor why I feel this is right for Kyle. So a lot of times I have uh, you know get-togethers with uh, business owners that include the, the, the tax advisor, myself as the investment advisor, and sometimes the state attorney, right? Because if it's big business where they're making a lot of money, I think having an estate plan and trust, those type of things is important to do as well. So I have conversations like that a lot of times. So that's awesome. Yeah. What would you do specifically with me? You know, I, I know that there's probably a lot more information yeah. that you actually need that we're not going to talk right. about in here. Yeah. But what would you recommend for me? Because I'm, you know, I've always, I, I definitely don't want to owe a lot of money in taxes. Yeah. And I also kind of like what I decided last year was, hey, I'm not going to invest in any stocks or anything like yeah. that. I'm going to put all this money in real estate because right. I figured that's where my money is best spent over sure. there. What do you think that you would do for me as an entrepreneur that does pretty yeah. well that, you know, makes decent money? Right. So I would say, you know, one, the only two, th there's, there's three things in this country that have outpaced inflation. Okay. One is real estate. The second is stock market. And the last is fine art. Okay. Okay. But most people aren't going to go buy a Monet for $3.5 million tomorrow, okay? But those are the three things. So, you know, if you've ever been coached financially, a lot of times they talk about having a well-diversified portfolio, right? So that means having, you know, some in real estate, some still with investment portfolio, and whether you want fine art or not, but have a well-diversified portfolio. On, uh, you know, investment strategy for yourself, um, do you have W-2 people in your business or is it you're a solopreneur? So with my junk removal business, every, every single employee was W-2. Okay. Since I sold that, I, I uh, everybody's 1099 right okay. now. Okay. So the so then your case then being a solopreneur then you ought to have a uni 401k uni meaning one or solo 401k you could put up to fifty four thousand dollars a year with a profit sharing and have it one hundred percent tax deductible all right so if you made so so people don't understand tax deductions is you know if you made two hundred and fifty four thousand dollars net right you know after all your expenses you can put fifty four grand in that comp away and now you all now all of a sudden you're only paying taxes on two hundred thousand. All right. So it's important, too, for people that are interested in doing something like that, um, especially if people I have business owners right now. I sit down with folks that they kind of were old school where they have what's called a simple IRA. You can't put as much money into it or maybe they have a SEP IRA. Now they have employees. 
a 401k ought to be in order. And those people that are interested in that, they really need to get it done today because if they have those old plans, you only can have one of those plans within your corporation or in your business. So it's got to be kind of started by January 1. Now, that doesn't mean like, you know, February or March next year, you can start a 401k. You're just going to lose the months of putting contributions in, if that makes sense. So, um, but that would be a, that would be a, a strong option for you that you, and then again, you have your real estate. I've had real estate in my portfolio as well, but you also have some other avenue, you know, cause I know you got a, a baby girl, right. And you know, there's things that you can do there, like 529 plans that you can put, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of money into. You can put up to 340000 I think, is the maximum that you can put in on a, you know, total lifetime into that. All that money grows tax deferred and it's tax free if it's used for education, right? These are, again, simple strategies a lot of people aren't aware of that I bring to the table whenever they're willing to listen. Let's talk about life insurance, life insurance sure. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, life insurance for my under, I, I yeah. don't have it right now. Right. I, I need okay. to, we'll yeah. have to, we're going to have to talk yeah. right after right. this. But um, so, you know, it seems like it's like a monthly recurring service. And then, you know, if you end up, you know, passing away or whatever, yeah. you know, your family's going to end up getting a, a lump sum of sure. money. How, how exactly does that work and why should somebody actually want it? And is there tax advantages yeah. there? Okay. And also, I don't know for sure, but can you borrow money against that okay. as well? Great. So there's a lot of different life insurance. This is a great question. It's it's a topic that I believe in. I, I've been an advisor now for 29 years, Kyle, and I've delivered 43 death claims. So that's clients of mine that have passed away, that lost their wife, their husband, seven child claims I've delivered before, right? So I always tell people, you know, getting the protection that you need is important because life insurance is not for the person that passes away, it's what you leave behind. Let's look at it this way. Let's say you take uh, an individual that makes 50,000 bucks a year, right? Okay, or let's say $48,000 for my illustration. So $48,000 a year, and you had this magic toaster that pop popped out $4,000 a month, okay? Like even if you had a job, but this magic toaster is like popping four grand a month out just for whatever you wanna do with. Now. If you were business minded, would you insure that toaster that it, you would insure that toaster to make sure that 4,000 keeps coming out? Well, that's kind of like what life insurance is. It's called, we like to call it as a company. I don't even like using the word life insurance. It would be income replacement. That's what we like to call it. Okay. And income replacement means that if you lose your wife, your husband, your significant other is how much income am I supplying for my kids, my wife, paying all the debts, et cetera that if I were to, to go and not be here, how much income does my wife still need to have coming in? So we go through a, a simple little analysis and it's, uh, it's an acronym, D-I-M-E. D is for debt, how much consumer debt you have. I got 50,000, car loan, credit cards, et cetera. Um, I is for income replacement. So I would ask a spouse, if, if you lost your husband, Jeff, today, tell me, Susie, how much money per month do you need to still have coming in to support you and the three kids? Right? And she says, I need $3,000 a month. Okay, so I make a note of that. M is for mortgage. What do you owe on your mortgage? Get that big debt monkey off your back, right? And last is education. So I would say, well, how many kids do you have? I got three kids. I would figure out exactly lump sum that if you passed away today, how much do we need a lump sum today for an investment to make sure college is taken care of 18 years from now? And then I figure it all up and says, this is the proper coverage that you really ought to have. And we believe in a concept called term life insurance. So term insurance is very vanilla. It's very easy to understand. You pay a very small premium for a big face amount of life insurance, okay? Most people realize how cheap it actually is. And we actually have term insurance that's all level term. So what that means, Kyle, is if you, uh, like let's say in your case, you're a young man, you, we're the only company that I'm aware that has a 35 year level term. So what that means is if you had a million dollars of coverage a day for X dollars per month, maybe 70, 80 bucks a month, your that million and that 70 or 80 bucks a month whether the premium stays level for the whole 35 years now we believe in a concept called the theory of decreasing responsibility so think about this you know you've got a significant other you've got your daughter you got a house you got car payment whatever it is right so most likely most of it's the, your income for your household is dependent on you today correct Likewise, myself, right? My wife stays at home. So I have an abundance amount of life insurance, but I also have investments too. Now, I'm a little bit different. You're starting to raise a family. My kids are all in college or soon to be in college. So they're all teenagers. But in the next 10 years, when I'm totally debt-free, mortgage-free, my kids are all on their own. If you think about it, how much life insurance do I really need at that point in my life? Because I'm financially independent. I have no debt. 
and it's just me and my wife. And I think she's going to be okay if I passed away. She has a house that's paid off. She's got a lot of assets. She doesn't need as much. So you need to protect your loved ones whenever it's required the most of protecting your income. You follow me there? And you do that through term insurance. Um, we don't market the products out there like cash value, uh, whole life insurance, um, universal life insurance, index universal life. You know, there's a, a lot of uh, noise and chatter online about, you know, bank on yourself and infinity banking. But when you peel that back and I can rip through a policy and in a second show people the differences of why would you spend this much money on a policy that's not really an investment, okay? Those type of policies you can borrow from. But think about this. If you're, and I sit down with people all the time. I, I had a 21-year-old couple in my that was referred to me recently, very successful business, and they were paying $1,200 a month for a million dollar policy on each of them, okay, into this index universal life stuff, sold it as a bill of goods of an investment, et cetera. Well, we found out based on his business debt, et cetera, he needed a lot more protection than that. So we doubled their coverage and their total annual premium for both of them, instead of $1,200 a month, was about $2,400 a year. Okay, so I just doubled my coverage for basically way less money per month. And if I were to pass away in the next 30 years, my wife gets X. And what we believe is the concept of buy term, pay less, take the difference in premiums you would have spent on the other stuff and invest it in like Roth IRAs, mutual funds, those type of accounts. So if something drastic happens, is the family going to get a monthly payment or are they going to get the lump sum? They're going to get the lump sum. And a lot of, another number a lot of people don't know about life insurance benefits they're, they're not taxable. Okay. So I just delivered a, a recent death benefit for 450,000. The first question the widow asks is like, Oh my gosh, like, am I going to get taxed on that? And people just don't know, but death benefits are not taxable. So now I will tell you of those 43 death benefits I've delivered over the years, you know, our company was there and properly protected those families, which every one of my clients has been insured more properly protected than what they had before, which is a good feeling for me because it to me, it's never been about marketing insurance. It's about doing the right thing and protecting the family. So therefore, if I get that phone call, which I've had many times, I know without a doubt, if I go to their file on my online, that their coverage with me was better than what they had before. So I can rest easy at night, okay? And when I deliver those claims, I always tell my clients, you know, I console them. Obviously, I, sometimes I agree with them. I go to their, you know, their wakes. I do all of that. But I let those widows and widowers know that, listen, this is where Primerica gets started because now I'm going to change your life, even though I cannot bring your spouse back. But this amount of money that you're getting, we're going to do the right thing with it, right? We're going to make sure that we're paying off the right consumer debts. Maybe or maybe not, depending on your age, we pay off the mortgage, right? And the rate that you have on your mortgage. We uh, set up college accounts. And then the biggest thing is we take that additional money. You know, you, you drop $500,000 into a modest investment. And let's say you pull 6% a year off of it. That's $30,000 a year, $2,500 a month. So even though you can't bring your spouse is not bringing that paycheck home anymore, that $2,500 a month just getting dropped right into that widow's checking account. And life goes on, right? I've, I've been able to take widows that had full-time jobs to go part-time at their job to so spend time with their children that are grieving to, because of they had the proper insurance, you know? So it's, huh. it's, uh, it's something I like doing and helping people. So I'm going to go on the other side of things here. Yes, How does an agent actually make money for the people who are watching yeah. this who potentially yeah. want to become their own agent? Sure. How, do, how, how does like that work? How do they get paid? Is yeah. it like all commission? Okay. Yeah. So we get so we get paid numerous ways in Primerica, but on the insurance side, it's very simple to understand. So we have promotional levels. So you know if you do this, this, and this, you get a promotion. And what's nice, unique about Primerica is we allow people to work part-time is they, uh, there's no quotas here. And we're also not revenue driven. Revenue driven basically means that a lot of companies put pressure on sales associates that says you gotta sell this amount or sell this product. We have none of that here. I mean, I've got part-time people that will not help a family this month, but next month they might help three families, right? So there's no quotas, none of that. But at every level, there's a certain percent of a commission that they do get paid. We call that active income. So if you actively help a family, so the easy to give you an example, my average part-timer will make about 500 to $700 helping somebody with an average term life insurance policy. So how is that income derived? Um, so we have a promotion with our company, usually within 90 days, they can easily get promoted there sometimes sooner. It's called a district manager with our company. They're on a 50% insurance contract. So all that means is, let's say for instance, an insured pays $83 a month for their term life insurance. 83 times 12 annualizes a thousand bucks. 
50% of the thousand, that agent gets paid 500 bucks for doing an hour's worth of work of helping that family get properly protected. Um, that's on the insurance side. Um, I, till, uh, I do a lot with the insurance, but I really have worked and managed my business where I do a lot with the investment side. Um, the residuals and the renewal income that you get paid forever on it is absolutely, I call it mailbox money. It just shows up every month, whether I do anything or not. I take a month off to go travel the money's still going to keep getting deposited, right? And it grows every year. You know, it just keeps growing without me even doing anything more. That's very unique. Like, you know, the gal that I was telling you about made 15 grand part-time in July. That was helping three families with their investments. And I did most of all the work, right? So I have a lot of associates that come aboard to us that, um, you know, that, you know, introduce me to other folks that need help. So it's not like you got to be an expert overnight in our business. That's why you have mentorship like myself and other leaders in my team that will coach you and mentor you because your success, the more success that you have, the more success we have too. So that's one way we get paid is active income. And that's like for anybody that's self-employed, you know, if you own a lawn mowing business and you're the guy driving, that's active income. You're going to cut the yard and make a hundred bucks. You actively make that money. Another way that we get paid is through what we call override income. So from day one, when a new associate comes aboard, a lot of times I would ask that new associate, hey, who other than yourself that's like-minded, that's you know, entrepreneurial-minded, go-getter, good people skills, know some people that you think would be good in our business? And so let's say I'm training a, you know, a guy named Gary, and Gary says, well, hey, I think my friend Matt, my neighbor, he's, he's always looking for something, you know, always doing side hustle jobs. So let's say I go recruit Matt. Well, if I recruit Matt, I put Matt in Gary's agency. We can start building an agency from day one, right? Well, what happens then once Matt gets trained, if Matt does a solution for a family, Matt gets paid, but Gary overrides, even on a part-time basis, Matt's productivity. That's American business. That's capitalism, right? I mean, people that don't understand why all the business owners are ones that are making all the money because they have other people working with them. That's in our business too. So my wife and I have been blessed over the years where we've developed a lot of representatives representatives in our agencies and multiple offices over time. And that gives us leverage. So you have override income, so active income, override income. And then the other way is we have what's called passive or residual income, mainly on the investment side where I'm still getting paid on things I did 25 years ago. How cool is that, right? I teach a 16 year old kid, a 20 year old kid, how to invest a hundred bucks in a Roth IRA. I'm still getting paid on that 20 years later. And we've taught people how to get financial independence. So um, that's kind of the three ways that we get paid, but whether they're part-time or full-time, they can do that. I love it. Yeah. How big is your team right now? So I have, uh, actually my team over the years has, it's like any business gone up and down right now. We've got about, uh, about 50 licensed representatives in our team, um, at a peak back in 2010, I had close to 150, right? Um, a little transition happened there. We were owned by Citigroup. I was telling you earlier, we used to sell a lot of Citigroup mortgage loans. Like we were in the refinance business. And uh, after 2010 and the whole meltdown back then, all the dynamics in the mortgage industry uh, changed. And you now you had to have a license, an NMLS license to sell a mortgage. And then our company went public itself. So we got out of the mortgage business. Um, I lost a lot of people. I had part-time people making 2000 a month, 3000 a month, 5000 I had my, one of my best part-timers made $88,000 part-time just doing loans in one year. <laughs> you know. And so we had a lot of people doing well. When the mortgages went away, a lot of my people left too. And that was okay. I hung in there. My income dropped dramatically. But uh, now, though, we market for the largest mortgage company in the country. So we, can, we allow people to get their mortgage license with us if they want to. Uh, we market for a rocket mortgage. Most people have heard of them, right? Mm -hmm. Number one mortgage company in the country. We also have a second mortgage company called Spring EQ. Uh, people need second mortgages, HELOC loans. So we can help people in the debt business today again. What's it like being a father, being a, a very busy entrepreneur? You know, obviously, they're a little bit older now. But yeah. what was that like, you know, as they were younger and they were growing up? with right. you probably being a very busy guy? Hey, that's a great question. So um, one of the, my mentors, again, Shane, always taught me whenever my kids were really, really young, okay? I, I retired my wife uh, literally like a, a year after we got married, okay? She was 29 years old. She's never worked for anybody in her entire life. Well, before that, she had a career as an accountant. But after we got married, one of my goals in life was when we started a family was for my wife to stay home, okay? My mom stayed home when I was a kid. 
but I also wanted to have that freedom so we could raise our own kids, right? And, uh, and she's had a lot of success in raising her family, no doubt. I mean, she had a, a much harder job than I ever had, you know, being a full-time mom with three kids under 38 months that we had three kids in a row, right? But, uh, but as a dad, my mentor, Shane, always said, Todd, listen, when you're young and even like yourself, I know you, you've got an eight-month-old, right? And I think uh, our friend here has got a four-month-old. When you're younger, I think, you know, th those kids that, you know, when they're toddlers like that, they don't know whether you're, you know, it's important to have the bonding, but at the end of the day, you pay, like Shane always told me, pay the price when they're young, because you're going to want to do so many more other things when they're older. Okay. And when I say older, like, you know, six or seven years of age, because like I coached my son's baseball every year, all the way till I couldn't coach anymore. Right. But I was always there. My, my nine year old at the time, our oldest Lexi started playing club volleyball at nine years old. I never missed one game ever. Okay. So you get to do other things in life down the line to pay that price early on. So work life balance. Sometimes I don't know how to describe it. I mean, I worked hard, very hard early on, but then in my business, it kind of got where I told you earlier, I kind of plateaued off. And part of it was I was raising kids and having fun. And I, I wanted baseball. to be the dad. I was coaching <laughs> yeah. baseball. I would, I, I never miss like if, you know, even I can remember my son going to like, like, um, like this gym, like just to kind of get his motor skills, like a little gym place, you know, being like three years old and they would have like parent day and I would be the only dad there in, at one o'clock in the afternoon. Why? Because I had control of my own time. And two, I paid that other price earlier on in my career to have that freedom to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So was your wife on board that whole entire time? Like she was like, yes, let, let, let's make that happen. Or was she, were you guys kind of button heads when you were busy at that time? Okay. Uh, well, I will tell you there, we it's still today we'll have conversation how hard it was. I, I respect and appreciate what my wife did do because, you know, there were times I would leave at nine o'clock in the morning and I'd get home. Cause again, I'm traveling around doing appointments ever. And I get home at midnight. I mean, maybe two, three times a, a week. Right. So I, Probably in the thick of it all, I didn't realize at that time how much of a price she was paying, you know, because I, you know, at some points it was like I wasn't around, but I knew it was going to pay off. And as, as an entrepreneur and somebody that's steadfast in knowing what you're going to get accomplished, it all worked out. Now, you know, over the years, we travel with our kids now. I mean, I love our kids. I, my, I think the greatest uh, testament of building a family and like a family business that we're doing right now is when my kids are grown, I want them to want to hang out with Trisha and I. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best testament. Like, you know, I, I hear stories like, well, I don't get along with my brother or no, they're not, they live on the East Coast and they're not coming home for Christmas. It's like, is, is your life so busy that you can't ke keep the family together? You know, and matter of fact, I, I mean, we travel well together. It's kind of funny. I tell some of my friends sometimes like, yeah, we, we took the kids to Hawaii or we took the kids to, you know, Dominican, you know, over Christmas last year. And they're like, they're teenagers. How the hell, uh, how the heck do you're able to do that? You guys, I go, we travel well together, right? Matter of fact, one of our trips, I can't even remember it was, but we were on the beach and I'll never forget. I, I made us all pinky swear. Remember when you were a kid, you did pinky swears. I made our, all of our kids and my wife, we all pinky swear together at the same time, stating that as we get older, we're still going to travel together. Okay. You know, if you're married, we're going to go travel together because I think traveling, there's always fun and we're beach people, right? as to be able to do that. And it keeps your family together. And, you know, another thing like with Primerica, it allows you to build a generational business here. And uh, Trish and I, when you hit a level of, of, of making a certain amount of income, 300 grand in income, you actually, the company gives you ownership of your business. And we've had ownership for a long time. And ownership- Can you sell that? Yeah, so you can sell it to somebody else in Primerica. So it's like a nine times, nine to 12 times multiple that you can sell your book of business and your agency. So, you know, we, we you know, I'm never going to sell my business. And my wife knows that because the thing is, if I passed away and died tomorrow and the good Lord took me home, the business is still there. Okay. And my wife can take over that business and still continue. Now, right now we're mentoring even our own kids. I'm having all my kids get professionally licensed in the business, whether they decide to take on Primerica or get involved with us. The cool thing is that they always know that they have a home to come back to, that they go out and get their teeth kicked in in corporate America, or they find out they don't find their passion and they want to come back and be in our business. They have an open door to do that when they want to. Have you bought anybody, any other businesses out of this? I, I have not yet yet, but I would love to find the problem is, is Good nobody time. wants to sell their business. Cause if they have ownership of it, because keep in mind, our income is let's say here today, just on the residual side of my investment side, 
you know, I don't know if you know the concept called the rule of 72, but the rule of 72, you take the interest rate you're earning on an investment and divide it into 72. It tells you how many years it takes for your money to double. So seven into 72 is 10 years, right? So every 10 years, so those assets I have under management in my investment business, if I never invested one more ounce of money for any client, I mean, I've got, I got six clients waiting right now to roll about a million dollars total of in, you know new assets that I, I got to do in the next week or two, right? But if I never did one more client, the money I have today of assets under management, just getting seven percent in ten years, it doubles. And what happens to my income? It doubles. And you follow me? It doubles whether I do anything or not. So it's like a cash cow, and the equity ownership position is absolutely unreal. Nobody in the industry, by the way, has that type of ownership opportunity other than Primerica. Most people's books, like an Edward Jones, great company, the Edward Jones Corporation owns the book of business. That's why a new advisor knocks on doors. They get 10, 12 million of assets under management with their book, and they realize that they're making this amount of money and they could go to this firm over here and make it when they leave, they leave their book. I'll never leave my book. And a I nine to it. 12 multiple is, is pretty big. Yeah. I yeah. don't even know if I'd want to buy with the nine to 12 multiple, yeah. but yeah. you're hearing the money that you can make. I mean, yeah. Whew. So somebody, I mean, somebody's making, let's say $300,000 residually. Well, I call it mailbox money. It just shows up whether you do anything or not. You do the math. That's 2.7, mm -hmm. right? Cause that's an endless amount of income and it only grows. It's just going to keep growing. That's the view. A lot of people don't understand financial services, but you know, there's a lot of businesses you have a lot of success in. But uh, you know, when you look at a per hour basis, you know, it, it's just as good as being an attorney and as a doctor. Because when you're a kid, like I don't be a doctor. Listen, financial service created more millionaires, all right, in the financial service arena than any other career field. So I kind of looked at that when I was 21 years old, going, okay, maybe there is something to this. I don't know nothing about it, but I'm willing to learn. Well, that's it. I think you sold me. I'm, I'm ready to throw in the towel with everything <laughs> no. I'm doing. Come work for you. Well, we, we could definitely talk. You've had a lot of success. And, uh, you know, one thing I want to share is, uh, you know, when I first, first saw you out on Instagram and with the Junk Academy, um, we were talking about this earlier, but when you had that very first webinar and your life changed, right? I won't go through the numbers, but your life changed. I was on that webinar and my son at the time was like 16 years old. And I'm like, cause again, I'm always thinking outside the box of doing something like, I, you know, cause people that make money and, and, and have successful business, they're always looking for ways to make more money, right? And if you have the resources and the contacts and you can leverage that, why not take advantage of it? So I bought into your junk academy, haven't taken advantage of it yet whether I do, my son or something. But I remember when you gave that broadcast that, that evening, it was your, I didn't realize that was your first webinar that I was on. We talked about it earlier, but uh, you did outstanding. And I know it was a life changer. And what's cool about that, those are, that was a defining moment in your business because that was the mind shift when you're like, I think I can really teach a lot of people how to do this because leaders like yourself that want to implore other people to have success is the definition of a true leader to me, right? It's not people that envy what you've got. Why, you know, like I was saying earlier, put your eagle to the side and go follow people that are doing it. That's part of the reason I like people that have success, right? I'm not one of those haters. I want people to be successful in my business. And I hope all your junk academy, you know, uh, and I see it, I follow you still today. I see all the numbers. Some of these guys are killing in six months, doing 40, 50 grand in, in business. It, it boggles my mind. And maybe I'll get there someday, but I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now. But it's something that definitely is on, on the burner for me sometime. Cool, man. Where, where can everybody find you? If they're interested in becoming, uh, you know, becoming an agent or yeah. uh, maybe even getting in touch for the investment side of things, where can they get a hold of you? You betcha. So um, actually, people that want to personally contact me, I have no problem giving my mobile number, right? Uh, I know it's not a little crazy, but I will do it, right? But it's 314 area code 249-6879, 314-249-6879. Um, also my Instagram account would probably be the best. It's T as in Todd, D as in David Bosler, B A S L E R. So T D boy, apple, Sam, L E R, uh, at T D Bosler is, uh, my Insta. And so that's where my people, Insta, Insta. <laughs> I, that's what my kids say. So I don't, yeah. maybe that's not the, yeah. my IG account, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning this, uh, the lingo yeah. a little bit. Right. So, but I appreciate you having me on today. I enjoyed it a absolutely, ton. Absolutely, man. Uh, I, I look forward to working with you. Yeah, as well. you bet. Absolutely. Cool, man. Thanks for coming on. You bet. Thank you. We'll see you guys in the next one.